what is going on guys it's your boy Edison as the video title suggests I'm gonna be going over the topic of why I would never buy a car on finance again where I think or where I think it wouldn't be my first option I don't know what the future holds it might be one of the only options and and I have to but I'll, I'll give you my reason as to why now a few months ago I did a video on a Audi A3 with a race chip in there and I was speaking to the owner and I said I would make a video talking about this exact topic about um, why I didn't buy a car on finance and now with the whole thing going on on YouTube the other day with um, LLF Ricky and his tuned M4 almost having to pay the full price for that car because he done some really really crazy modifications to it which is absolutely insane um, so yesterday I made a video I'm installing a strut brace and someone commented below I thought you wasn't allowed to modify finance or leased cars and I replied um, keyword finance or leased cars my car is not financed I did make a video like a few months ago saying how I managed to get, get this car why it's not on finance I'll get to that towards the end of the video I was honestly shocked with all, with that whole like drama that was going on well not drama but like controversial like situation with like modifying finance cars because I thought it was okay but the only issue is you can't modify a car that's leased because if you lease a car then it's technically not yours because say for instance you lease it for like a one year or, th or a three year period with the intentions that you're going to give it back when that period spins like a contract kind of thing well not that you have to give your contracted phone back like from what I can recall if I'm being accurate it's kind of like you pay like a monthly to, you pay a monthly fee to borrow a car for a lot like a long term rental kind of thing my first car my VXR of course that was on finance and it was a five year agreement um, where I'd pay £250 every month for five years no deposit and at the end of the five year term the car would be mine as I said before I did not know that like literally you cannot modify a financed car like I thought like because you own the car from you're paying for the car monthly the car belongs to you and you own it but like that that's completely new to me now as I said there are people that have different stories and different ways to go about it but with my car as I said it's not financed I pay for it cashed I pay for it cashed <laughs> so the way I done it is I got a personal loan through my bank so the reason I done that was one because after the VXR um, I kind of wanted something that wasn't as, as expensive and I still I just I couldn't I couldn't bear myself doing it but it's at the same time I was looking at alternatives and this one on finance would have been out of my price out of budget for me but when I went to the personal loan route the interest was a lot better and like it's not as I said it's not finance it's like it's a personal loan so you borrow the money from the bank you pay back to the bank if you can get finance through the bank for a car but it's a personal loan I won't explain all the intricate details of what that means if you are interested in finding out what personal loan is then Google it but at the time the interest was a lot was like half the price of like a normal finance from a car dealer so that was that was literally the reason why I was able to get this car if I if I had a, if I had went through finance this car would probably be a hundred pound more per month than what I currently pay so the, the personal loan because of the lower interest really did help me out when it came to buying this car and now to the point of modifying the car as it's a personal loan the car more or less belongs to you like I mean if you don't make the payments then obviously the bank will seize your assets to like if you literally default of making payments for like months after months then obviously the bank will like you know when the bailiffs come to your house because you have debt obviously that will happen that will happen in any situation where you owe money to something where you owe money to a company or a bank or whatever that being said you're 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 more or less able to do whatever you want to your car you can tune it you can do that because the bank doesn't care the bank like you know what I mean you, the bank gave you the money maybe the only reason like that would even be an issue is if you if you if you suddenly lost your job and then the bank realizes that you're not you don't have enough income coming in to make the payments then they will probably start like sending you messages like um your your monthly income doesn't match your monthly outgoings and because of this we might have to cancel the loan and take whatever is left back and blah 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 now I don't know if that's the exact words that will happen but I can only see that being an issue like if, if that situation was to arise but overall like as I said I wouldn't I personally wouldn't buy a car on finance again if I had the choice 
because obviously if I want like a if I want like a supercar, if I can get a personal loan for like a hundred thousand pound, um, then I'll go for, I'll go through the personal loan route because the interest would be a lot cheaper, meaning the car would be more fit, more affordable for me uh, when whatever the future holds. I don't know what that is. Yeah, but I don't know what the exact um, interest rates are these days because I haven't really looked at it. But I just know personal loan normally is cheaper through your bank anyways if you have good credit that's that's an important thing as well if you have good credit rating there's no need to behave like that mate <laughs> if you have good credit rating then it's normally cheaper so it all comes out to even good credit rate because your bank won't give you a loan unless you have good credit rating if you have a history of paying back on um, bills on time if you haven't made late payments on your credit cards another thing with finance is um, sometimes you come, there, there can be a problem when it comes to selling the car on so for one if you try and sell it privately if the car is on finance and you can do like a, a HP check I think it is and people don't normally buy finance cars because like you can the person that you're buying it from can even not make the finish making the payments and then the person that owns the car get the car repossessed from them the, the, the new owner of the car then surprisingly get a knock from knock on the door the bailiffs come and repossess the car because the payments for the car has not been completed even though the new owner has paid fully for the car that they bought the previous owner probably didn't finish making the finance payments and now the new owner is in deep doo-doo for it you had this thing called like negative and um, like negative and positive equity so for instance i buy a car for 10 grand and it's a five-year agreement interest takes it up to 12 grand um say halfway through the period i decided i wanted to sell the car the car is now valued i'm not doing exact maths but the car is now valued let's say seven grand but i have nine grand remaining on the contract payment now that's probably not like accurate but just to give you an example so 12 grand 12 grand total pay 12 grand total like sum to pay off the car is valued seven grand i have nine grand remaining to pay so that means that is a two grand gap meaning i'm in negative equity so if i sell the car for only seven grand i'd have to find that extra two grand to finish paying off the loan or if i don't and i sell the car then i'll still have i still have to make that monthly payment to pay off um the remainder of two grand or that two grand then gets transferred onto your new car and it's just a constant cycle when it comes to like to finance because imagine you now you've now sold that car but yet you're a negative equity of two grand so that two grand then gets carried on to your next car so your next car might have cost 16 grand but because of the two grand positive the, the, the negative equity that gets transferred to your new car it's now 18 grand plus interest takes it up to like 20 22 grand and then that process happens again and then now you have like a four grand that negative equity and you can see how that can really mess you up whereas um if a personal loan it, do, it doesn't get that deep i mean the, the the margin for negative and positive equity is a lot tighter because the interest isn't that much um so i think that was one of the, the like a very that's a very positive point or a very positive um that's a very positive attribute this is not even attributes when it comes to personal loan versus finance i'm not a financial expert let's just put that out there i'm not a financial i'm speaking from experience about all the little things that i've read and all the, the from like as i said my personal experience with the whole process um so hopefully maybe this um might give you something to think about when you come to putting pen and paper and signing a next um finance agreement like just something to consider because like, as i said these days everyone's making videos about um financing a car no one who talks about personal loan which is obviously another way to go about it that can be more affordable like you'd be surprised like maybe you want to maybe you're in the market for an m3 and you can only and the finance um with the finance payment you can only afford a 335i and then you try a personal loan before you know you can get an m3 like, i don't know like i'm just saying like that's a bit unrealistic not really unrealistic you never know just do your research before you go ahead and sign that being said thank you guys for the support make sure you like this video if you found it somewhat useful and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye